to talk a little business, for us to talk a little bit about real estate, continuing our conversation as it relates to managing a shifting market. So excited, excited, excited. Welcome, everybody, everybody. All right. So uh, if you've not uh, attended one of our Create Your New Life or you've not seen one of our Create Your New Life sessions, this is where we come together as an organization and we talk about business. We broadcast it, so we share it. Our agents are able to get on board and log in using our web-based platform uh, for us to engage, and we do it once a week. So this is our company meeting. Uh, in addition with that, there's always a training component. So um, this current series is an 11-part series that we've been going through the book shift. Uh, I believe this is the seventh episode of our series. So we started all the way back uh, with episode 116, uh, dealing with you know how to not only survive but thrive in what some would consider a tough market because the market might have shifted. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. The great thing about these opportunities is that it's an opportunity for our, our agents to log on, our agents to get coaching, to ask questions, uh, for us to dialogue about any of the, uh, any of the, just pretty much anything, right? It's just a way for us to connect. All right. So now, before I begin, a couple of things that I want to add as we did our Create Your New Lives is I want to encourage um, if you are not already following us, subscribing, I, I, I want you to follow us, engage with us on social media, okay? You know, once a week, we send out a lot of content on all of our multiple social media platforms. Um, you're probably watching this on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. If not, we may have sent it to you in one of our other social media platforms. So the best way for you to get notified whenever we're putting content out there is to do one of the following. You know, subscribe to the YouTube page. We have a business Facebook page. You can like that, and then you'll get notifications when we put content out there. Um, you know, my I have my a personal LinkedIn page, personal Instagram, personal Facebook page. And I put content on all of those as well. Um, and it's not the same content. So I know a lot of people have multiple social media platforms. So they'll just create some content. And they'll just put the same thing on all of their platforms. Some of the areas we do duplicate in some of the areas. Uh, but some of the areas, they it gets completely unique content. So I highly encourage you to go out to Facebook. LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and do what it says. Subscribe, like, follow, learn, most importantly, and then share. If you felt like it was something that you gained from it, share it to someone else. No point in keeping all the good stuff to yourself. All right. The, uh, also, if there's anything as I go through this session, you know, we are looking to recruit. We're looking for talented individuals to be a part of the organization that we can assist in development, helping them make more money, utilizing our one-on-one -on -one coaching where we're going to put you in the right position to be successful. Uh, so if you like what you hear as I go through my conversation with Shift, as I go through some of the business matters of Brooks and Davis, you want to hear more, I highly encourage you to schedule, uh, go to our appointment scheduling link and schedule an online or in-person company introduction. So look, you don't even have to come to the corporate office. So that's why it doesn't matter if you're close to the office or if you're far away from the office. We do so much virtually that um, you can be highly effective in some of the outer areas. Our office is by NRG, so it's more centrally located. But we have agents in Spring. We have agents in Tomball. We have agents in Katy. We have agents in Rocheron. We have agents all over the place. Um, I was just doing a coaching session with one of our agents in spring yesterday. Guess what? Utilizing our web-based web conferencing software, Easy Talk. So, you know, that's not something that you have to worry about as far as being able to come into the office and have that level of access. We ensure that you're going to have it. 
So that's the link. Go to the link. If you're interested, schedule an appointment. Let's sit down. Let's do an, let me do an online or company introduction with you. All right. Another thing about our Create Your New Life is that every week our agents have the opportunity to get an hour of CE credit. Now, for them to be able to capitalize on that, they actually have to join the live session, which is uh, of the Create Your New Life. Now, I said the live session is because, again, we I broadcast them, and they're all on our YouTube channel, so they can still access the content. Anybody can access the content, right, at any time, at your leisure. That's why it's important I say subscribe to our YouTube page. Um, but... If, the, if our agents are going to capitalize on getting the continuing education credit, the elective credit, then they actually have to log on to the uh, live session, right? Um, then they must show their identification. We do that offline. I need to be able to see the student's face, and the student must stay online the entire time. So um, that is just that easy for our agents to get credit for uh, being a part of the Create Your New Life and getting this information. So um, using our providership that we have access to, Brooks and Davis Real Estate Continuing Education Institute. All righty. So excited about today. Uh, we're continuing. We're doing part two of the right and wrong way to sell a home. Last week, we talked about pricing, right? So if you missed that episode, go back to episode 121. And I spent the entire time talking about how important the strategy that you utilize when pricing a home can impact you being able to sell it or not being able to sell it. Again, remember, we are going through this book right here. This book by Gary, Gary Keller, Ship. Um, I highly encourage you, if you are a real estate professional, that the thing about real estate is that a cycle is inevitable. There's going to be a cycle. So now it's a matter of not if, but when. Well, this book really helps manage during those, during those shifting times in a real estate market. And so you have the book. I highly encourage you to read it. But now you're going to have these videos of me walking through, pulling out the, the finer points and giving commentary around them to further assist in you managing the waves of, of uh, a, a shifting market. So uh, I think this is a phenomenal series, and I encourage anybody, whatever episode that you've caught us on, that you go back, start with episode 116, and look at the whole thing all the way through. Okay, so again, what are the right and wrong ways when talking about selling a home, the part two, and marketing a home during a, a shifting market? Okay, now, in addition to the book, we are going to look at uh, some, uh, our, um, a moment in core, which is something that we always do dealing with our core ideology. Um, also going to do, we do these things called takeovers where we come together and we fellowship as an, uh, a company. Uh, it gives me an opportunity as the CEO to really spend time uh, on a deeper level with my agents. So it's not always just about real estate and business. You know, we get out together and have some fun. So we're going to look at an upcoming takeover that we're going to be doing, taking over Katy, Texas. Um, and then, you know, we're also going to look at a listing. I haven't did a listing showcase in the last couple of weeks, but there's one in the Spring Branch area that I want to showcase. I think it's a great listing. Um, so it's good for me to share and show with everybody. So we're going to do that as well. All right, so we got a jam-packed show. Excited about it. All right, so let's jump into our moment in core. And, again, our, Brooks and Davis has a core ideology, and our core ideology is made up of three elements. Um, our big, hairy, audacious goal, which is the one that I want to look at today. Um, but we also have a core purpose, and we have five core values that our core ideology is built around. So in essence, it's the fabric of what we do and how we move as an organization. Well, our big, hairy, audacious goal, are going to be the number one real estate company in the state in profitability and production, okay? So now, for the longest, 
the deadline that we was placing on the goal was 2020, but 2020 is right around the corner. And as you can see, just for us to get out of the Houston Metroplex, production levels need to be north of $250 million, because that's what Martha Turner Sotheby's International, that was their production level in 2019. So we're not there yet, but guess what? It has nothing to do with what we're striving for. So I'll just, I like doing things in 10 year increments. You know, when John F. Kennedy gave his presentation to the United States and said, we're gonna put a man on the moon within the decade. Well, I wanna follow suit. And what I'm gonna say is, is that we're gonna be the number one real estate company in the state in production and profitability within the decade. So that's over the next 10 years. So now we got this humongous thing that we're looking to achieve. And the, the exciting thing about it is that not only am I going to have to become a different person as CEO, our agents are going to have to become different things. The organization as a whole is going to have to become something. And I truly believe that we were forced to achieve that. And I truly believe that whatever we turn into, I don't know now, but whatever we turn into, whatever I turn into, for us to be able to achieve that, we're going to like <laughs> that new us, right? So I'm extremely excited about it. And that is what our goal is. So now that was just to get out of the, out of the Metroplex. But per my most recent research, um, there's an organization, it was originally Keller Williams Realty Arlington, but I think now it's Go Media, I mean, Go Real Estate, Go Management Services, um, but it's 14 offices, they're Keller Williams offices, 4,800 agents, $9.5 billion worth of production is what their uh, statistics are. So just, so for us to be number one in the state, just in production, you're talking about $9.5 billion worth of production. I ain't scared. I ain't scared at all. So we're going to accomplish that within the decade. Uh, so who wants to be a part of the ride, baby? Because it's going to be a good one. All right. Um, the quote that I had connected to our um, description was from Les Brown. On, uh, for you all that are not familiar with Les Brown, he's a motivational speaker. You know, you can go on YouTube, Google his name, L-E-S. B-R-O-W-N, and uh, he gives great inspira inspiration. One of the things he says is, you got to be hungry, is what he says. He says, um, you know, you got to be hungry. He also says, if you, um, he says, if you get knocked down, fall on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. Shout out to, shout out to Les Brown. I actually was able to see him live at a national conference with the Houston Black Real Estate Association, and I really appreciated seeing him live. And I, I typically go back to checking him out on YouTube as well. So the quote came from Les Brown, and he says, you must tell yourself, no matter how hard it is or how hard it gets, I'm going to make it. So that's the, continue, that's the entire quote. And again, we're talking about tough times. We're talking about shifting markets. So... You got to tell yourself, you got to have that self-talk. And no matter how hard it is or how hard it gets, you got to say you're going to make it. Not you think you can, not you're going to try. You have to be definite. You have to have a level of def 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 definiteness in your meaning and your language that you utilize because a lot of that is fuel and it moves you in a particular direction. So... I thought this quote was fitting for our discussion over these last weeks or so in our uh, shifting series. Uh, and again, you must tell yourself no matter how hard it is or how hard it gets, I'm going to make it. So appreciate that, Les. Thank you very much. All right. So we went through our core, moment in core. I want to welcome uh, our newest agent, which is, her name is Treasure, Treasure Shepherd. So definitely want to welcome Treasure to the Brooks and Davis family. Um, just signed her up. She just signed on with us over the weekend. So we're in the process of getting her onboarded and everything, get her scheduled for orientation, and then begin a 
first coaching session. So welcome, Treasure. We're excited to have you. Look forward to phenomenal and great things in your future from a real estate space uh, for, from your Brooks and Davis family. So welcome aboard, Shepherd uh, Treasure. We are excited to have you. Had a great time meeting and, and visiting with her over the weekend, uh, and I'm glad she made the right choice by signing on with us. Uh, it's going to be great for her, and it's going to be great for us. Okay, uh, just to take a, a quick look at our pending board. Again, this is something that we look at every week. Um, you know, again, working, we're at the end of the year, so everybody better be gearing up. For 2020, our goal is, is to make sure that this time next year that we have more than just two of our agents that have deals under contract. Now, they have a whole lot of deals under contract, but with, a, with a, a, an organization of 35 realtors, we know we can do better than this. So right now, I'm pushing all of our agents. Let's go ahead and get some coaching sessions scheduled. I want to I have a coaching session with every single one of my agents before the next two weeks is up because we don't need to be going into 2020 coming from a complete dead stop. We need to be moving so we can build momentum as we move to the other side of the year, right? And the best way for us to do that is through strategy, through coaching, through dealing with the psychology of what has been preventing us from accomplishing things in the past, right? All right, so we're a little less than $2 million. Um, these are two uh, agents that have stuff on the contract. So congratulations to Margaret Harrison being our top producing agent and Laquana Davis being our number two producing agent. Um, but boom, we're going to get this thing. We're going to get this thing moving, right? Now that we got Treasure, we're going to get Treasure's name up on the board, right? Uh -huh, so that's what we're going to do. All right, so there's a, a great property that I want to showcase today. Uh, this property is at 8943 Gaylord Drive. It's actually a condominium. Um, I think this property would be superb for Airbnb. Like if somebody wants to come in and, and purchase it and then put it on Airbnb, I think that uh, this would be a very, a very good property to uh, utilize that vehicle. All right, so here's some pictures. This is our, our marketing leak, 8943 Gaylord, number 225. It's a first level, it's a first level um, unit. And uh, you can kind of get an idea. We put in new carpets, cleaned it out, um, some paint, um, you know. So it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice, a nice property, right? We do have a video tour of the home. And again, showcases how it's been maintained. Let's see, I can hear that. It's being narrated. So, you know, in addition to the pictures, you get an idea of uh, one of our team agent, Chica Moma, who's just giving you a glimpse of the inside of it. Right? So we have that there as well. Another thing that really helps this property stand out is there's we have condominium financing, right? Um, you know, sometimes, especially when you're dealing with FHA loans and you have issues with occupancy rates uh, and things of the sort, well, you'll run into, if you don't have a, if you don't have a company that is proficient in that type of financing, then it can cause transactions to bust out or it can cause them to be a lot more challenging or difficult than they need to be. Well, with this particular property, we do have preferred lenders that specialize in condominium financing, which will really, really help maneuver some of the nuances of selling a a condo. So we're we're at 150,000. It's right the the pool is literally right outside your front door. So if you're the kind of person you have a client that loves to sit out by the water, 
loves beautiful days like the day today. Now, it's a little cold, but it's so beautiful, so sunny. Get your book, put your ear pods in, and maybe listen to some nice, relaxing music. You ain't got to go far. You got kids. Maybe you got nieces and nephews over for the weekend. You got somewhere right, right outside the house. Pool parties, perfect, perfect location uh, for where it is. And then in addition to where the unit is inside of the complex being the perfect location, we're also talking about location-wise as far as the city, right? Right in Spring Branch. So you have that easy access to 610, easy access to I-10, and then you even have easy access to the Beltway. It's a straight shot uh, that, you know, have, being so close to I-10, you can get to wherever you're trying to get to in either direction, east, west, north, or south. And so it's right there in Spring Branch, uh, an, an excellent, again, location. Can't say it enough. If you're familiar with Houston, then you know how being in the loop can really be um, a, a great addition from a quality of life standpoint. So you know that. And if you're not from Houston, then take our word for it. You want to be in the loop. And to be able to get in the loop for, you know, less than 200, less than 175, 60, 150,000, man, that's a steal. So let's go, baby. Let's get it sold. If you have a client, if you're looking at this video and you may be interested, go ahead and reach out to us, engage with us so we can get you more information about the property here on Gaylord. All right. So one of the things that we do every week is that we discuss, uh, are we going to detail about one of our programs that we offer to our agents? You know, it is something that we are intentional about doing on a consistent basis is offering more and more value. You know, we sell our brokerage firm to agents, new agents or seasoned agents. We sell our brokerage firm from a standpoint of the level of value that we can bring, right? We're not a discount brokerage. We're not here to have our fees be rock bottom. Um, so it's a no-brainer for you to sign on with us because there are no fees. No, we don't do it like that. Because our goal is, is that, and our belief is, is that if we help you go from nothing to something in this business, help you learn this business, help you become successful, meaning financially in this business, then the amount of money that you pay to us as far as in member dues or commission splits is really nothing compared to where we want you to be as far as you being a champion in this real estate business. And the way we have it set up is set up to be able to achieve that. So these are all the different programs that we offer to help our agents move in the direction that we would like to see them move. All right. Now, the one that I really want to focus on today is our hotline, okay? So the reason that we created this hotline is because we recognize that it can be very daunting, especially if you're a brand new agent, it can be very daunting when you get in the midst of a transaction. So, it, and because most people do not want to be in a situation where they feel like they, they cannot supply what the client is needed based from a knowledge base, from an understanding base. So because they don't want to put themselves in that situation, then they get a little bit of cold feet as far as executing what needs to be executed uh, to move the deal forward or, or to move their business forward. So because of that, we designed this hotline. So between the hours of 10 a.m. or 10 p.m., any of our agents can call this number and someone will answer the phone, right? And now that's in addition to my cell phone because all of, our, all of my agents get my cell phone number. So being able to tap into a knowledge base of over 15 years, over, you know, over 1,000 transactions under my belt, to be able to tap into that level of knowledge base at any given moment, I mean, what other brokerage firm is offering that level of access? Well, we are. Right. So that's what that hotline is all about. So now you don't have to worry about making that phone call to that buyer or or knocking on that door with that 
for sale by owner or setting that meeting with that seller or talking to the person that's looking for the apartment. Like if it's just a matter of the details, let's call the number. If it's something that you don't know, call the number, get the answer, right? If it's a matter of mechanics, paperwork, what form should I use? What should I not use? Get the answer, call the hotline. Now, if it's about strategy, schedule the coaching session, right? So this is not the number for coaching. This is not a number for a long, detailed conversation, how we dig into the psychology of things. That's what our coaching sessions are for. This number is solely for getting questions answered so you can keep the transaction moving, so you can keep the ball moving. So there's no hold up in momentum when it gets to getting the transaction to the finish line and putting yourself in an opportunity to where you can put some money or you can get, you can realize the benefits of the work and the effort that, that we do daily in this business. So that's what, that's what our hotline is all about. All right. Um, now, we do these things. I briefly talked about it. Um, Brooks and Davis takeovers. Right. Uh, this idea came. I felt like I wasn't spending enough time engaging uh, with our agents. You know, I'm being a CEO, really focused on vision and strategy. Clearly, you see what we're trying to accomplish within the decade. So, because of that, I get pulled away from what I feel is extremely important. And that's just spending an experience in life with us. Like we, we are a family, and that's, those are the things that families do, is that they experience life together. So um, we started doing these takeovers. We try to do two to four uh, a, a month of these, these takeovers. So we are doing one today, actually. And we do them in different areas because we have, like I said, we have agents in Katy, we have agents in Spring, we have agents in Rocheron. Um, obviously, we have agents in the city, we have agents in Cyprus. So we try to move them around the city. So we're going to be doing a takeover this uh, today, actually, and it's going to be in Katy. Uh, we have some some agents in Katy that because what I do is I'll ask them, hey, find us something, find us an event or something that we can go to as a as a as a group and and network together. You know, you know, we know that networking and engaging is important. So it's a lot easier when we do it together. Um, it, can be a lot, it can be a lot more comfortable. It can be a lot more fun when we do it together. So this Tuesday, we're going to be going to this event, and it's an in-Houston networking mixer. Uh, it's going to be at Canton Firewood Pizzeria on, off of Mason Road in Katy. Uh, so we're going to be doing that today. Um, we're going to be having our Brooks and Davis takeover event is going to be held here today. So even once I finish with the Create Your New Life, I'm, my agents that I know that are on that side of town, as well as our affiliates that are on that side of town, and then I'm going to nudge them and say, hey, look, come hang out with me today. Uh, we're going to be in your neighborhood. Let's do it, right? So just a glimpse of some things that we have coming up. All righty, so now let's jump into our training for today. Uh, we're gonna, we got about 30 more minutes, uh, matter of fact, 30 minutes on the dot, so where we can dig in with this second part of um, how to, you know, the, the right and wrong way to market a property, you know, in a shifting, during a shifting time. All right, so, you know, I, I spoke about this last, epi last episode, episode 121, that I wanted to um, really, really hone in on you all being able to connect how our Realtor Success Funnel, which is the linchpin of everything that we coach from a mechanic standpoint, how our Realtor Success Funnel related to what Gary Keller is saying in the book, okay? So now, where we are right now, we are in tactic number eight. Remember, there are 12 tactics that Gary says need to be executed when in a shifting market. 
So we've already talked about seven of those tactics. We are now today going to be looking at tactic number eight, which is stand out from the competition, seller staging strategies. That's the tactic that we're going to look at. All right. So now, does that fit anywhere when it comes to this lead conversion? No, because the stand out from competition, you've already they've already become your client. So you've done all of this. You've been successful in all of this. This part right here, you've been successful in. You've got them to agree to the appointment. And during the appointment, you got them to agree to hire you. So we're past this stage. Now, where are we with the Real to Success Funnel? With the Real to Success Funnel, we are in skill set number five to where we are working to get the client under contract as soon as possible. Right? So that's where tactic number eight, as it relates to Gary Keller and his 12 tactics, would fall in our Real to Success Funnel. Skill set number five, in this, these key areas, we're going from client to contract and efficiently and quickly moving through that part of the Real to Success Funnel. So that's where we will be when it comes to Number one, you know, last week, pricing ahead of the market, that's where we will be. And this week, stand out from the competition, that's where we will be, seller stage and strategies. And matter of fact, next week when we talk about, you know, dealing with buyers and, and their reluctance in a market, that's where we'll be, skill set number five. So for the next three weeks, we will have been in skill set number five in that area of the success funnel. So... And like I said, I wanted to be clear on you all understanding how it all connects and comes together. So I think that's extremely important um, for you to get, but I hope that you get out of this series. All right, so let's dig into tactic number eight, standing out from the competition, seller staging strategies. So this is the thing about staging. Staging is about evoking an emotion with, with the buyer, right? And you want, you know, we say it a lot, and I, and I know people hear it a lot, that buying or making a decision to buy is an emotional decision, right? When we decide to pull the trigger, when we decide to sign our name on the dotted line and make a decision that we're going to purchase something, then there's a feeling that drives that, that action. There's an emotion, uh, you know, there's a thought, a thought that fuels an emotion and a feeling, and in that emotion and that feeling prompts that action, prompts that activity, right? Um, unfortunately, you know, we're not practical beings, right? So we don't use practicality to make these kind of decisions. We do use practicality, but we use it, to justify the decision, not to make it, right? So with that being the case, the, the condition and the look of the property, it has, an, has a profound um, influence on an offer being submitted. And that's why it's important when marketing a home for sale that we're, you spend, you're intentional about it. Just as intentional as you are about the pricing strategy, you need to be about the condition and how you're going to handle the presentation of the property, right? So now, the challenge, the reason that it has to be, that the reason that it's so imperative is that very few people have the imagination to visualize beyond what they see. Most buyers are unable to envision how a property will look when it is in its best condition. Uh, even if they could, they rarely see themselves doing it, like, so it's that imagination that we lose as we get older. Uh, we be, it becomes more and more difficult for us to imagine things, right? Uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, we were on our way to my son. He had a tournament baseball game this Saturday, and we were taking him to the baseball game, and I was, try, I was trying to do visualization exercises with him. Yes, I coach my family just like I coach everybody else. So – trying to do these visualize, visualization exercises with him um, so it puts him in a better state of mind when he's 
going to perform, right? And guess what you have to do when you do visualization exercises? You have to tap into your imagination. So I was trying to help my eight-year-old do something that he does. All, it's easy for him to do it right now. He's always imagining stuff, right? So we got to do more of it as an adult. Uh, but with that being said, buyers, as a seller, as a listing agent, you already have to walk in understanding that the buyer is not going to see themselves past what they see when it comes to the condition of this property. So someone must do it for them. And smart sellers realize that and work hard to show their home in its best light, right? That's why, you know, you have those we talked about last year, those that, uh, last week, those that are in the market and those that wish they was in the market, right? Yeah, they may be on the market, but they're not in the market because of this key right here. It's not being showcased the, the right way. So when the market shifts and fewer homes are selling, savvy sellers recognize that their home must outshine the competition. And there's a, only a few ways to be able to do that. We're going to talk about those today. So now, when we, whenever we say price is the number one issue in getting a home sold, what we're saying is, is the, that the price must match the condition of the house, meaning the, the price must be a reflect must be a, a, a um a direct reflection of what the person is going to be getting for what they're paying so it's really not the price is the problem it's the price doesn't match the condition that's really what the problem is so be, so when that happens one or two things must have to happen when there's when there's a when there when the price and the condition are out of line, then guess what? The house is not going to sell. So that means one of two things has to happen: either you go down on the price to match the condition, or you leave the price where it is and you go up on the condition to match the price. It's got to be one of those two things. And if it's not one of those two things, then it's not going to sell. Wishful thinking is not going to get it done. Um, it's no other, you know, the amount of marketing that you put it on, the amount of money that you spend in marketing. None of that's going to matter if the price doesn't match the condition, period. Okay? So um, let's talk about staging, right? Because, again, staging is one of those vehicles that, that you can utilize and keep your price here to move the condition up to match it. Okay? Now, regardless of your uh, uh, seller's intention or their idea and belief around staging, yes, it costs money, um, but the, the reality is, is this. It's not a question of if you should stage or not stage your home. The question is, especially when you're talking about finances or, or, or sellers spending additional funds, what kind of staging, right? So when we say staging, yeah, we, sometimes it is a matter of, you know, getting a bunch of new furniture and, you know, having the home look like a, a model home, right? But that's just one aspect of staging, right? You can stage items that are already in the house, like if it's a home and, and the people live in the home, then you can utilize their taste to stage the house in such a way. And that doesn't cost the seller anything. Um, look, it doesn't cost the seller anything to make sure that before the bed is made and that it's neat and that it's decluttered, right? That it's open, it's clean. And that doesn't cost that doesn't cost anything, right? But that's staging. That is considered staging the home. So those are the conversations that are part of the stage, right? Staging is an essential part of the marketing process, right? A lot of times when we sit down and we talk to sellers, the seller wants to know, well, how are you going to market the property? Well, the reality is, is that if it's not staged appropriately, our marketing strategy is still half cocked, right? We got to have both. You got to have the exposure part. So that's just one part of the process. You got to have the exposure part and you got to have the staging of the property and the showcasing of the property for it to fit together like a glove. So you got to have both of them. Um, I actually, a couple of years ago, I wrote a book 
called um, I Believe. And the reason I want to show this is because, you know, one of the things that Gary says is that staging helps entice the buyer to take a look and perhaps get hooked on the home, right? And that was one of the things that I, that I brought out. That was one of the things that I brought out when I, when I put this book together a couple of years ago. So um, let me uh, let me show this book to you. So here it's it's a digital book, and if anybody's interested in the book, um, we I can get it to you. Don't worry about it. Real easy. I can text it to you. But um, in the book, we talk about the six areas of what all it takes to actually sell a home. If I can make this big. All right. And in, in this book, area number four is, you know, well, okay, so all six areas, I'll just go through all six of them real quick. All right, so the first thing is, the first area of what goes into selling a house is the buyer comes across the home. So that's the marketing, that's the exposure piece, right? That's, that's, that's the realtor, right? But then once that's done and the realtor gets the, gets the attention of the buyer, then the buyer has to get a desire to see the inside, all right? And that comes from, you know, the property description, you know, that comes from the price. That comes from the pictures that are showcased on uh, as far as the home, that helps the buyer, that entices the buyer to want to see the inside of it, not put an offer on it, to get them to want to see more, see the inside, all right? So then after that, the buyer gets into the home. So that's 3A. That's here at the bottom. 3A, the buyer gets into the home. So that's you get your lockbox or make it easy for them to get into it. Don't make it a challenge. Like that's where you got to return the phone call. If they're ready to see it. If they want to see it at a particular time, as a seller, as a listing agent, you got to want to make arrangements for them to do that. Okay? So 3B, after the buyer sees the home, so after the buyer sees the inside of the home, 3B, buyer wants to submit a purchase offer. So that's that enticing that uh, Gary's talking about, where the buyer you want to utilize the condition and how that poem is staged. Once they're in it, that atmosphere, that environment, you want to um, you want to produce the, uh, the the ability for the the client to or the buyer to visualize themselves living in the home. They're making a life, you know, their new life in this property. So all of that staging helps them to build that vision, build that picture of themselves inside of the home, right? So that's part four of what, we, what I was talking about here, giving the buyer the desire to want to submit an offer. And then after that, that's where your negotiation comes in, step five. And then the last thing is, is that once you agree on terms, maintaining that level of commitment to purchasing the home all the way to closing. Um, Gary calls it, um, actually, he has another. He has a couple of more tactics that we're going to go through later on in the series that hits some of these six areas as well. Why my mouse? My mouse just is so sensitive today. But hits really. What's the problem? All right. I don't know what that's about. I don't know what that's about. Okay, let's see. Hmm. My computer's tripping. Stop. What's the problem? All right, let me see if I can fix this. What's that about?
Okay, so I don't know what that was all about, but uh, we got to work through. Okay, so the all right, so yeah, so that I, I wanted to share that with you because staging again, the point of it is to put the buyer in a position to where they are enticed to see more about the home. All right, all right. So the next thing that Gary talks about when it came to the staging aspect of things. Here we go. Um, yeah, so the next thing, again, is, uh, you know, staging is about, and I'll reiterate, it's about preparing the home, right? Again, cleaning it up, cleaning it out, repairs, improvements, all of that directly impacts how will the house be, how will it be sold and what price you can put on it. So, all of that is a part of the staging conversation. It's not just about hiring a person that's a stager and paying for some furniture to go into the property and then putting it on the market. Okay. Um, you know, they, they obviously they run statistics around this thing. Um, they did a study utilizing Caldwell Banker residential information, looked at 2,800 properties in eight cities, and they found that staged homes. Um, on average, sold in half the time in non-staged homes, and the sellers with staged homes ended up with 6.3% more than their asking price on average. So science backs it up, right? Research backs it up that staging and how a home is staged dramatically impacts how a house will be sold, okay? Um you know, in finding the right plot in finding the right price, we attempt to make all the other variables equal. So there are multiple variables when it comes to selling a house. We all know about location, right? Location, 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 which is always going to be the big gorilla in the room. Uh, but then you got size of home, you have the amenities, you have condition. So now the reality is, is that when it comes to location, you can't do nothing about location. The home is where the home is, right? And then when and when it comes to size. You know, most sellers are not going to add additions to the home. So, you know, that's that's out of the window as well. But when it comes to the last two, which is amenities and condition, right? And amenities are the things that the home offers value and in the condition of the property when people are in it. Well, once you start talking about those two things, that's something that can be done prior to the house going to market, right? The, you know, a homeowner can add more amenities. And as a realtor, we can showcase those amenities and be intentional about showcasing those amenities. Um, and then as far as condition, again, cleaning it, repairs, uh, you know, showcasing. Uh, for instance, if, there's, if you have a study, you got French doors on it, right? Well, making it look like a study with a desk and, uh, you know, a, 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 a shelf and things like that, really enhances that amenity of the fact that this home has a study, right? So that's how it looks. Um, so the staging, the adding cost-effective amenities, improving the condition, you know, we're talking about cleaning, painting, floor treatments, repairs, like those things make a difference, all right? So now, when a seller does one of those two things, you know, when a seller does those things, when it comes to enhancing, um, you know, either the house becomes more valuable than the other comparable properties. Because remember, that's what this is all about, getting the house to stand out above the competition. So one or two things happen when you do those types of things, like say floor, floor treatments, you know, adding amenities um, and being intentional about the condition of the home. Then the house becomes more valuable than the other comparable properties in that price range or the house gets moved into a higher price range based on how its condition is. But in that higher price range, it's the most affordable home in that price range, which again makes it more valuable, right? Because of the character. So in essence, it's the lowest price home in that category of homes based on the condition and amenities that it offers. 
That's how you position a house to move quickly, all right? So now, a buyer's market is definitely a stages market, um, you know? So if you're a stage, I mean, if you're a seller and it's a buyer's market, then that's where you got to put even more attention and effort into making it look good. Because reason being, buyers are looking for a great deal, especially in a buyer's market. And buyers are looking for great value. So the house that they'll choose to them must look like a it must look like a great deal. It must look like great value to them. So that's why in a buyer's market that's important. Um, the the home must look like it's worth what the seller is asking. Period. All right. Now remember that in any market, unless the price absolutely and completely reflects it, buyers want great looking homes in moving condition. Right. You got to remember that. Don't think that, oh, well, I'll just leave a carpet like this and then offer a carpet allowance. That's that's a technique that a lot of sellers and a lot of listing agents utilize. You're not maximizing your opportunity there. The seller's in a better position. <coughs> the seller's in a better position if they can to get the repairs done ahead of time. Right. Thinking that a buyer is going to come in there and be able to look past the repairs, it's not going to happen, right? 15 years, thousands of transactions. It's a worldview that I've now come to understand. It's not going to happen, all right? Um, let's see. One of the things that Gary says is that staging always follows the 3P2F formula. Um, the 3P2F formula has to do with Plantings, paint, pictures, that's your three Ps, plantings, so plants, paint, pictures, and then the two Fs are fixtures and furnishings, right? So he did give us a, he did give us a visual. I'm going to show the visual. All right, so he talks about the buyer experience. Uh, the buyer experience determines staging priorities. Okay. So now we've already discussed this stuff, internet listings, internet promotional flyers and cards. So we've already talked about your generation, lead generation situation. All right. So now once we've done the marketing piece, and I said that earlier, once you've done the marketing piece, and the marketing has done its job, then guess what? Now it's time for them to see the home, right? And this is how it flows. The first thing that they're going to see is the curb appeal, the front of the house, right? So you want that looking good. You want to, you want, that's what he said, plants, plants, paintings. You want to, uh, have phenomenal curb appeal, right? Again, he calls this an experience. That's a very important word in what we're talking about, experience. So you want to enhance the buyer's experience. So the first thing they're going to see is the door. They're going to see plants and bushes and the grass. You want that stuff cut, cut and manicured. And you want to have it in a consistent rotation of these things being done because you never know when the buyer, your buyer, is going to show up. Right? So the first thing they see is the curb appeal. The next thing is the entryway. Right? From the entryway, typically it goes to the kitchen. From the kitchen, typically it goes to the master bedroom and bath, into the living areas, into the other bedrooms, into the backyard. So now, since that's typically how people are going to flow through the house, if you have a limited budget when it comes to staging, then all you have to do is look at it from this standpoint. Because guess what? Most of us, we are sold at some point, you're going to get sold on this thing, right? The curb appeal may be enough, right? So you're either going to get sold or get dissold at some point. Well, say if you put all your marketing money into the backyard, they may not even make it to the backyard because by the time they get turned off on some of this other stuff, they'll just say, I'm ready to go. And, and trust me, take my word for it. I've been on plenty showing appointments where in the middle of the showing, we didn't get through the whole house. Buyer was ready to go to see the next house. So you want to spend your marketing 
your dollars, your time, your energy moving at this trajectory, starting in the front of the house, you know, whether that's pressure washing, whether that's painting the front door, whether that's, you know, spending money on making sure that the lawn is kept, you want to you do that. Then you want to deal with the entryway, making it swept, clean, windows are nice and washed, you want to do that. Then you want to go into the kitchen, then to the master bedroom. Why the master bedroom and the master bath? Even if somebody has kids, right? They're concerned about where they're going to be spending a lot of their time. So making sure that the master bath and the master suite is immaculate, along with these other things, like those alone can get your house sold, period. You know, you can have negative marks on all the rest of this stuff, but you got enough of them for somebody to say yes. You just need to have enough for somebody to say yes. So when you're talking about the three P's and the two F's, all right, well, planning, that will be done in, in your curb appeal. Paint, that could be done in your curb appeal, in your entryway, and your kitchen, and your master bed, bedroom. Pictures, you know, in the kitchen, master bedroom, living areas, right? That's where you want to put your stuff. You don't need to go break the bank by uh, staging the bedrooms, right? You don't need to do that. But these other areas, that's where you want to be smart on where you spend your money when it comes to staging the house. All right, so last thing, uh, right there, that's just another visual. So you can prioritize these five. Like when you're looking for quick cosmetic improvements, then this is what you want to be looking at, quickly enhancing those units, all right? So now, again, you can do a hire a staging professional. There's a cost. Obviously, that's the best thing to do, right? Because you are clearly because you're spending money. But but most sellers, you know, that, well, you, that doesn't a seller doesn't ha that doesn't have to be the only option. Like we don't want you to think that that's the only thing. What staging is, right? It's more than just hiring a staging professional. You don't have to just do that part of it, all right? Um, but the truth is that any seller must know is that in the end, pricing gets you in the game. But staging gets you the offer. And what does Gary mean by that? What he means is, is that pricing and your marketing, as long as that lines up, that draws the interest and the desire of the buyer, right? But all that does is gets them to the front door. It doesn't get them to submit an offer on the house. That just gets them to the front door, which is a critical part. You got to get them to the front door. And once you get them to the front door, get them inside the house, then the staging of how you showcase and present the home is what gets the offer. That's what gets them sold. And that's what should be your intention in the staging part of it, right? In your marketing, it shouldn't be about selling the house. It should be about encouraging and enticing them to want to see the inside. Once they get on the inside, that's what seals the deal. All right. So that wraps it up for us today as far as that part, tactic eight, how to stand out amongst the competition. I mentioned this earlier. We are going to be uh, next episode, not next week, because next week is going to be Christmas Eve. And I'm not doing a session on Christmas Eve. I'm going to be spending time with my family, like you should be as well. Um, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about how to manage and overcome barriers when buyers get cold feet and become reluctant when the market shifts. All right. So we're still going to be in skill set number five as far as the, the fun um, working on how to get the client under contract as fast as possible. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, with that being said, I don't have any agents on. So no coaching this time. Uh, let me go ahead and get my music going. And uh, we can uh, bob out of this thing. Yeah, I like my use. I like my Wow. Shall we begin? No, because we are out of this piece. Yes, yes, yes. Another one in the book. Another one in the break. Um, so, 
We had a good show today. Just a quick recap of agents being able to get their CE credit, right, if they log on. If you like anything that I had to say today, visit the link, schedule an appointment. We'll do an online or in-person company introduction with you. And look, you, this is, we're on social media. We send out content like this one, two, three times, up to three times a week. We send out this kind of content on our social media platform. So go to them, subscribe, like, follow, learn, share it, do those things. If you're in the Katy area today, come on by to our Brooks and Davis Takeover. We're going to be there between 6.30 and 9.30 at Canton Pizza. Uh, it's going to be a networking event. I'd love to see you there. Um, if, you, if you do come in, shake my hand. Boom, let's have a good time. And uh, with that being said, you guys have a happy holiday. I don't talk to you before then. Merry Christmas. Hashtag 2020 is coming. Michael G. Davis, CEO, broker, Brooks and Davis Real Estate Firm. Look forward to coaching you into the cosmos. It's time to take off, baby. Let's do it. All right.